Hi, people of God. <clears throat> Glory to God. Glory to God. God is so wonderful and so worthy of all of our praise. He is worthy to receive glory and honor and might and power forevermore. He is worthy. Yes, God is worthy. Lord, you, you truly are worthy. So I have a word for you guys today. So the Lord has been dealing with me <clears throat> about um, our idols as uh, the body. And the Lord is separating his bride from the church. So there's a difference between the bride of Christ and the church, right? The church, people who, um, because there's going to be a lot of people, y'all, who've accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, but they won't, they will not endure until the end. The Bible says that after you've endured all these things, then and only then shall you be saved. So he that endures to the end shall be saved. It's not about receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior initially. It's not about accepting Jesus. That's the beginning, right? You got to follow him after that. So after you accept him, now you have to follow him. You have to you have to pursue him. It doesn't stop at, oh, well, I don't accept it. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. A lot of people who've done that, they stop at that point. They've let bitterness, anger, wrath slip into their lives. And so in the end they haven't endured so they won't be saved according to the bible and when god told me that if they if if the people don't know my word they will perish um i was taken aback because i'm like okay lord the people gonna perish if that yes if the people don't know my word and my word the way he was explaining it to me is his son yehoshua and what's written about him the whole word the bible itself testifies about jesus christ from beginning to end y'all every story jesus is in it <laughs> every parable jesus is in it he is the kingdom hallelujah hallelujah so the word that god gave me <laughs> god is so awesome god is coming for our idols men and women of god God is coming for our idols. So everything that we put in place against um, against him, higher than him, or equal to, equal to him, he's coming for it. And a lot of people have made medication their idols. Um, God has been dealing with me about this a lot because in the coming days, weeks, and months, and the coming years, there are going to be a lot of mandates placed on mankind. And these are all things that God is allowing. These are all things. God is not like surprised. <laughs> God has revealed this fact to his prophets many times over. I'm not the only prophet who has heard God say this. Um, but God has revealed that there are a lot of mandates. There are a lot of medications. And that mankind is wanting people, not just the saints, people in general, to make an idol. And people have made idols out of their medications, out of their medicines. Um, people who claim to know Jesus Christ consult their doctor before they do the Holy Spirit. Hear me with the Holy Spirit. I know you might not like what I'm saying, but God says so. Please test every word that I say up against the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will never agree with your opinion. The Holy Spirit will never agree with what you want to do or what you think is right. He'll always confirm himself. I have had to be rebuked and corrected so many times. And I actually read Hebrews chapter 12 to my son last night because I had to discipline and correct something <clears throat> that he was doing. And as we were reading Hebrews 12, I was expressing and explaining to him, you know, discipline doesn't seem right at the moment. It's actually painful in the moment. But the Bible says that if you not if God doesn't doesn't discipline you then you're actually illegitimate. You're not a, you're not actually his child. You don't actually belong to him. You're not actually his seed. And so anytime somebody brings a corrective word and your first thing is offense, you need to check your heart. 
where has that spirit been laying dormant in me that this person is saying something that's coming against my idol because you actually might have an idol of medication your idol might be food your might your idol might be um vitamins and minerals there are some people who consult their vitamins and minerals before they consult the holy spirit too so don't think i'm just talking about one one particular thing god said overall i'm coming for your idols so anything y'all that we have made more important than him anything god that we guys that we consult before we consult the holy ghost is an idol so if you are taking medications and the medications y'all are meant to keep us on them did you know that did you know that medicines were actually meant to keep people on them i remember um a couple of years ago uh, I was diagnosed at the time with a heart condition, a heart, a heart disorder. And the doctors told me that I needed to take some type of blood pressure medication. I was in my twenties. Okay. And something rose up inside me and my response was, no, I'm not taking blood, blood pressure medication. And the doctor said, well, when you start this medication, you have to, be, you have to take it for the rest of your life. You cannot go off of it. And I was thinking to myself, why in the world would I do that to myself at 20 something years old? Because at the time I was living in, um, I was in a backslidden state. So I wasn't even in all the way with the Lord, but something rose up in me. It was like I was speaking before I thought about what I said. And I said, no, I'm not taking any blood pressure medications. And the doctor said to me, this would, you would have to take this for the rest of your life. You cannot go off of this heart medicine or this blood pressure medication whenever um, and it wasn't even blood, it wasn't even medication for what I was ailing with because my heart issue at the time was my heart rhythm. So my heart rhythm, I was diagnosed with something called sinus tachycardia, uh, with PVCs or premature ventricular contractions, which means that my heart was, my heart rhythm was a normal rhythm or it was happening in the sinus node of my heart. So I, I have a medical background, so that's why I, I'm always talking medical terms, terminology, but it means that the rhythm was occurring in the sinus node of my heart, which is the correct node of my heart, but the rhythm was too fast. So tachycardia just means rapid heart rate um, above normal um, heartbeats per minute. And PVCs are premature ventricular contractions, which means that my heart was contracting before um, before the normal rhythm. So everybody's heart beats at a normal rhythm, but mine was going outside of it with like skip beats and do stuff like that. So, um, and I think that's really important to share because there might be somebody listening to this message who might be dealing with something similar um, or who might deal with something similar. But I want you to know that God is almighty, is Jehovah, um, Jehovah Rapha. He is the God who heals me. So it's not just... It's not just Jehovah Rapha, he's the God who heals. The actual name of God, Jehovah Rapha, is the God who healeth thee. He got that name in scripture because he healed someone's body and they called him by the name Jehovah Rapha. Glory to God. So back to the medications. So I wasn't even going to, they weren't even correcting the issue that I had, the blood pressure medication, because they didn't actually, I guess at the time, have medication that just fixed my heart rate. <laughs> they only had blood pressure medication um, that fixed the heart. They only had heart medication that fixed the heart pressure, but a byproduct of that or a positive to that was that in turn, it also would fix the heart rhythm. Okay, so it wasn't even necessarily for my particular situation. That's why we have to consult um, the all the Almighty Physician before we start consulting our doctors. See, a lot of people want to say, "Well, God gave us the doctors for a reason. God gave us the physicians." But the problem is, see, we're living in the last days, y'all. I just want y'all to be very clear about that. We're living in these last evil, wicked days. And because we're living in the last days, things are things are not as they seem. And God told me a while ago to make sure that I judge things not based on what I see. What I found out that that was, was righteous judgment. So use God's judgment, not human judgment. That's what he was telling me. Use 
Use my judgment, not your own. Glory to God. That's exactly what he was saying. Use my judgment, says the Lord, not your own judgment, not what you think is right, not what you were taught or told. Make sure, y'all, that nobody is more influential in your life, to your life, to your situation, your circumstances than God Almighty. I don't care how many degrees they got. I don't care what kind of doctor, because the things that are coming on this earth. Hear me by the Holy Ghost. The things that are coming on this earth, y'all, are going to test even the elect. The things that are coming on this earth, y'all, are going to test the ones who have known God and been walking with God for a long time. Because after reading Matthew chapter 24 and after reading um, 1 Thessalonians, after reading all these scriptures about the times, the last days that we live in, the times that we're living in currently, after reading all these things, I found something very interesting. There is a lot that we have to endure to get to the end. A lot. Earthquakes. Um, plagues. Um, the Bible says because of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. Because there's going to be so much wickedness and violence going on on the earth, people are going, going to start to be have hatred. The Bible says that people are going to give it, give you up for persecution to be stoned to be imprisoned and to be um persecuted and then it says that a lot of them it's going to cause division and then people are going to fall away from the faith even the ones who've been walking with god for many many years even the ones who have had mighty encounters with god none of us are exempt that's why we all have to work out our own soul salvation with fear and trembling that's why nothing can be your god except for yahweh or you will perish so god said that i'm coming for your idols i'm coming for the idols of my people if they if they want me they have to give up the medication they because y'all there's going to be mandates where you're required to um do things and get things that are actually against God, but he will be the one who allows them. Hear me, people of God. They will actually be against your heavenly father, but he is going to be the one who allows it because there are some there's a shaking that has to come so that everything that can be shaken will be removed and everything that cannot be shaken will be will remain. So if there's any idolatry in your heart, God, God is exposing it. We're, li we're living right now in the times of exposing, of exposure. People's um, idols and God's lowercase g's are being exposed in this hour. God is getting rid of a lot of our idols. Because what are you going to do, people of God? When the government or whomever is in authority... In a position, a physical position of authority over you. I didn't say a spiritual position. I didn't say Yahweh. What are you going to do when they tell you that you cannot get your medication or you have to take the mark of the beast? What will you do? What will you do, people of God, when they say that you cannot buy your gro groceries or you must take the mark of the beast? We better be trying to prepare now. You better be growing your own gardens now. God is going to have, we're going to have our own economy as the people of God. We're not going to be, um, we're not going to be downtrodden and stepped upon. No, God is not leaving us without wealth of resources, wealth. While the rest of the world is going through, the people of God will be flourishing. The ones who've been in the secret place and preparing now, the ones who have taken correction and made corrections now, so when what God is bringing on the earth, <laughs> so with that, what God is bringing on the earth now, what he's getting ready to allow in the days to come, in the days, weeks, months, and years to come. And I do mean days, weeks, and months to come. God will fulfill every word that he said, everything that he spoke in revelation. And God told me it will do them no good to pray against it because I'm sending it. My word will come to pass. So be very careful, people of God, about praying against everything that you see. Because some of it is the book of Revelation coming to pass. Some of it 
is first Thessalonians coming to pass. Some of it is second Timothy three, one through five coming to pass. So be very careful. Make sure that you are led by the Holy Spirit in how you pray. Make sure that you're being led by the Holy Spirit in everything you do, even when it comes to medications. People of God, God has been talking about these medicines and vaccines to me, and I have not listened. I did not go asking him. About, I'm going to tell you, I didn't go asking the Lord, what, Lord, what do you say about this? What do you, God is my witness. God has been revealing things to me in general because he has shown me the way that people, his people, which are called by his name, have made idols out of medications and vaccines. I'm just telling you what the Holy Ghost said. And don't take my word for it. Please go to God about every word that I say. Do that with any and everybody. Okay, we're living in a time, y'all, of mass deception and false prophets. The Bible says that false prophets have gone out and the Antichrist spirit. And another thing, stop looking for the Antichrist man and realize that the Antichrist spirit is in the earth right now. <laughs> that spirit is roaming the earth right now. You don't even have to wait for the Antichrist man. You don't have to wait for him because this, that's, it's a spirit. That spirit will be inside of a man. But that spirit is already inside of people. Now, anti is to do the opposite of or to go against. So it's anti-Christ, the Christ. It's anti-Christ. <laughs> it goes against Christ. So anybody in any doctrine who is trying to teach you, um, make sure that you don't serve Jesus. He's this, he's that, he's not this. He's And got you looking at Christ differently? Like got you looking at what Christ looked like on the outside? When we know that he's seated at the right hand of the Father right now? <laughs> it's a false spirit trying to draw your attention away from Christ. Like he didn't die for your sins. Like he didn't sacrifice everything for you to be alive today, right now glory to God. So please people of God, God said he is coming for your idols. Whatever you have, whatever TV programs, even if it's harmless y'all, even if it's harmless if you're doing it more than you're spending time with Yahweh, it is an idol. Glory to God in the name of Jesus. Hear me by the ear of the Holy Ghost. Father may you open the ears and the eyes of your people in the name of jesus because like i said the other day on another video if the people's eyes are closed it doesn't matter how much light you shine on them they will not see it or perceive it glory to god if you think that you know everything because you've been walking with jesus for 30 something years or 40 something years or 50 something years you will be one of the ones who will perish and you won't endure to the end because you're not willing to be malleable or pliable for God to bend you in the last days. Because what people don't realize is we're in the last days. There is a different set of rules for the last days. The days that we're living in right now, are there are specific moments in scripture that explain the last days specifically, expressly in the Bible. So we better catch that revelation before we perish. Glory to God in the name of Jesus. And pray that God give us the strength to endure to the end in the name of Jesus. And we better stop looking at people, the person, the messenger, the person sending it. I don't like the way she talked. I don't really care for her. She used to be a liar. I've heard her lie before, but God can use even that one. She used to be stealing stuff. She used to be a stripper. God can use even that one. And if you're listening to the Holy Ghost and you're not watching the person because you don't like the way they talk and you don't like the way they, they say it or they said it, you will perish because it will in fact be God. And God is going to be using very unorthodox people in this hour because he said, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and daughters will prophesy yours. So if God is pouring out his spirit on all flesh, you better be very careful of who you don't receive his word from in this hour, these last days, in the name of Jesus. 
but we have to make certain that we are not making idols out of these things. We have to make certain because God said to me, I'm coming for your idols. I'm coming for the church's idols. I'm separating my true bride from the church, from the church, the church building, the church people, the churchy people, the religious ones. I'm separating my bride my beautiful bride that I've set aside for myself, that I've prepared for myself. I'm making her ready. I'm making my beautiful bride ready for my arrival. And we better be ready to let this stuff go because people, <laughs> the medical system is only designed to continue to increase the funds and revenue of the medical system. And God is shaking everything the political world, the governmental system. He's shaking your house. He's shaking my house. He's shaking the world up so that everything that remains, all that's left is him. So if you in a, if you in a relationship or a friendship that's being shaken and it don't last, God is shaking everything that can be shaken. He's removing things that were not of him. He's removing, removing relationships, removing um, groups that you have set up that he's no longer a part of. Don't be like Saul. I mean, don't, don't be like, uh, who was it? Samuel, who God had told him, listen, yes, I chose Saul, but I'm not with him anymore. So how long are you going to cry over somebody that I'm not, or a situ a circum a situation because he called Saul to be king, but then Saul messed it up. And God said, okay, I'm leave I've left him. And Samuel, bless his heart, just kept crying over Saul. And God said, how long will you cry over him? I done moved on to David. I want you to come over here and be in my will and get out of your own way. Glory to God. So if God tell you to stop taking the medication or he tell you to leave that medication alone and, or he tell you what the agenda of the medication is, <laughs> you better listen to the Holy Ghost because I know God to be Jehovah Rapha. I have, I know him, I know it personally. God has personally shrunk a tumor in my left breast without any medication or surgical intervention as God is my witness. God has completely removed a heart issue and a heart um, mal mouth, whatever, without any medication, completely gone because I asked him to, because I declared the word of the Lord over my body instead of taking medication, because I decided to take the scriptures every day like they prescribed the medication make sure you take this um insulin three times a day well i'm gonna make sure that i read um that the bible wants me to prosper and be in good health even as my soul prospers i'm gonna make sure that the second scripture that i take and on the schedule that they wanted me to take the insulin i'm gonna make sure that i declare um that the word is life to those that find it and health to all my flesh and then at two o'clock when they wanted me to take the third dose i'm gonna declare that by his stripes I am healed in the name of Jesus. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? We better get it together. And it's not just medication, y'all. It's stuff that we put in our mouth and our bodies. If you're drinking coffee every day and you're getting headaches when you don't drink coffee, you might need to reevaluate some sort of addiction. I know people don't like, <laughs> people don't like this kind of word. People don't like this kind of word, but God is taking away our idols, y'all. And he's doing it for a reason so that you can endure until the end. Because when this world system, when this demonic system that God has allowed, because his word must come to pass, just because it's demonic doesn't mean that God hasn't allowed it to fulfill what he wrote. Glory to God. When this world system, y'all, makes people choose it or Yahweh y'all gonna see why God is shaking right now you're gonna see why he shook things up first and warned you first through his prophets the scripture says that I don't do anything in the earth without first revealing it to my prophets so you might not like her you might not like him 
but God is the one who sent me in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the actual name of Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. So take heed, people of God. Take heed that, that no man deceive you, that no man come and take, run up on you and take your crown, that, that Jesus doesn't come like a thief in the night and you weren't expecting him to. Glory to God. God is shaking our idols right now where we got to rely and depend on him solely for everything, for a breath, our next breath, that to the point where we can't plan nothing in the future without him. God, what are you doing? Am I allowed to go there, Father? Am I allowed to do this? Lord, am I allowed to say that? Am I allowed? We better get the fear of God. <laughs> Lord, restore the fear of God back into the hearts of your people, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I fear God more than I fear anybody watching or listening to this or anybody who won't watch or listen to this. <laughs> because at the end of the day, I have to answer to Yahweh and God is giving me and people like me a spiritual and a supernatural boldness and courageousness in these last days. We're not caring no more what people think or what they got to say about who we are, what we do, what we've said. We, we just don't. We just we just can't. We can't be attached to that anymore. And to God be all the glory that we fear him. The fear of the Lord is hovering over me right now, even as I'm speaking. It's been hovering over me at this point for days. Days. And I thank God for restoring my fear in him, my awe in him. I'm I'm come I'm just I'm dumbfounded by how incredible and how powerful God is. Excuse me. And everything that he can do that I can't do for myself. So I hope that you heed the word of God, people of God, so that you don't perish. Um but instead would have everlasting life. Um God is shaking up your religion. He's shaking up the way that you think things should be done. God is getting ready to remove a lot of um, things from a lot of you who are open to God being the head of your life. Because saying God is the head of my life is like not a part of testimony service. It has to be a lifestyle for you. It has to be how we live every day. God literally is Lord. So if he tells me to don't do that or don't take that, when they, the rest of the world is saying yada, 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 I'm asking God, obey them to have rule over you. If they not full of the Holy Ghost, why are you obeying them? Number one. Number two, why didn't you ask the Holy Spirit what to do? Because Daniel, in the same scripture that you're quoting from the same chapter, Daniel did not obey <laughs> whenever they told him to not pray when they told daniel when there was a rule out a rule a governmental rule by the king that said do not pray to any god except for the king and his gods daniel still prayed i believe three times a day <laughs> he went and asked god about it <laughs> And the people found him praying <laughs> and they went and snitched on him. <laughs> God is coming for your idols, people. Y'all been using the word of God to your advantage. You're going to perish if you do not take heed. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for your correction. Thank you, Lord, that before you send the sword and your judgment that you warn your people. Thank you, Lord. We have made idols out of so many things. And Father, I repent for myself and our, my people. Lord, I repent for my brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord, who have made idols out of medicines and vaccines and whatever the news reports say and whatever the rules of the land are, God. I repent right now for every idol that we have erected, Lord, over you i repent lord for every time we consulted the news instead of you holy spirit i repent for every time we consulted our doctor before we consulted the great physician glory to god lord i repent right now for me and my people lord and i'm asking that you show us mercy mercy father in the name of jesus christ of nazareth 
Show us mercy, Lord, and help and cor correct the behavior, Lord. Help us to correct the behavior, Lord, so that we don't perish, but instead we'll have everlasting life and that you will strengthen us to endure until the very end, Father. Everything that's been set up, the earthquakes, the plagues, the deception, the false teachers, the antichrist spirit, the division, the persecution, the false accusations against our names behind our backs, Father God, the imprisonment, the division, the violence that we're going to see. Lord, help our hearts not to grow cold. Help us to say our eyes fixed on you like Nehemiah when he was building that wall. In the name of Jesus, give us that grace, Father, for these last days. In Jesus' name, amen.